Awesome. What's going on, YouTube? I'm Scotch. <laughs> and I'm Sniff. And, and we're we are Scotch, Scotch and Sniff. Sniff. Today, we're going to be opening and reviewing what? and tasting for the first time for the first new time. bottles from Scotland. From Scotland. We've got here Airstone coming from William Grant and Sons. So, what? William Grant and Sons has decided that we need so a new whiskey. bottle of Scotch whiskey for beginners. And of course, when they were like, hey, I don't can know we... what whiskey is. <laughs> they were like, hey, can we send you guys some bottles? I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Beginners is, that's, it. that's what we do. That's here. what we it's do. Here, it's Scotch and Sniff. It's fantastic. That's right. So we've got the Airstone. Airstone. So we've got Airstone. Um, we're assuming that's how it's pronounced. It just seems based on way. the spelling. Yeah. It looks like Airstone. Yeah. Which um, I'm pretty sure it's not. Uh, Airstone. Me. <laughs> Airstone is like, uh... yeah, so we're going to see how it is. It's for beginners. They did a sea cask and a land cask. Um, the land cask is supposed to be peated and introduce people to like that type of flavor profile. The sea cask is supposed to be a bit of salinity and things like that. So it's supposed to introduce people to that. So it's a bit nippy. we're gonna taste it to see what's going on. The original competitor, and I know not everybody's gonna be a fan of hearing this, is the Glenlivet Chapters as an introductory whiskey. Um, these come in at a dollar cheaper. Yes, that's straight from the reading material that they put in the box that they sent to me. So, um, I mean, I'm just being honest with you guys. Like, that's what's up. So these bottles were free and they did send it with material. They all, anytime brands send bottles to like your favorite YouTubers who are doing whiskey reviews, I promise you there's a packet of information inside of those bottles that's like, hey, this is what's going on inside of these bottles. So Brian Kinsman done. The things that they won't say inside of those packets though and the things that I had to go email them because I was curious, these look awfully dark unless they were cherry cast and they're not, um, for 10 year old whiskey. So I emailed them and maybe asked the brand ambassador that I won't throw out there under the bus. But um, these do have E150A in them and they are at 40%. So I know some of you right now are like, oh, that's it, I'm not oh, gonna caramel watch color it. But, it, but in the end of the day, like they did test and you can't taste caramel coloring, although everyone is posting these stupid links to, there. so there are a couple of like anecdotal reviewers out there who've done these like, oh, I did tests with my friends and we could taste all the caramel. Oh, like how friends. much, one, how much caramel did you put in there too? Like there's one that's out there that's like, you can't even get E158, but I got it from someone in the dun, industry. Dun, and it's dun. like, look, at the end of the day, the color, we don't care. They're doing it for consistency. American whiskey brands do it all the time, except for very specific types of bourbon. I know there are laws for this, but like at the end of the day, none of that matters. What matters is how does it taste Especially for the price point. These are coming in like a dollar cheaper than the Glenlivet chapters, which is what they're fighting. And like. it's been proven that like uh, yeah. Americans won't buy whiskey that doesn't look dark and it's not aged. So like when it comes down to it, um, I screwed up and only got two glasses. Well, we so can we'll pour one. Oh, one of each. Yeah, we'll pour one of each and then we'll just switch and we'll make decisions. We'll see how that goes. I have a bad feeling about what's about to happen. Ooh, it's viscous. Call it a hunch. Uh, mm -hmm. We don't usually cut in the middle of videos but that's about to happen. So if you notice a gap here, that's why it's happening. Or we could just maybe continue so. with what we're doing. I think somebody's coming through the front door. That's maybe why. grab some uh, some other glasses. We'll see what Ooh. goes on. Ooh. Which one? That's the land cast, right? Yeah. Oh, the sea cast immediately is like old Pulteney. Oh, I wanted to put the right brands in front, but we'll just turn these glasses around. Well, that one's fine. <laughs> Sorry, McCollin. All right, let's trade. Hey. hey. All right, so the, the sea cast smells awesome. The land it, cast it really does. This reminds me of old Pulteney. It really does because it's got that solidity, but at the same time, like quite a bit of like oh, tree fruit sweetness. That is completely different from the land cast. It's so good though, right? The land, oh my God. Is, the land cask is the far more peat, <laughs> like peat. Oh. No, it is not bad. It, no, it's there's not the worst sweet peat, but like peat, all I got was eraser, pencil smoky, eraser. Iodine. I put my nose in it. That was a mistake. On the plus side, it actually is lighter than most of from Isla. Wow. To be fair. But it does smell like Isla. It's like Isla light. The sea cask is it's the sea cask rich, rich fruit. I told you, Zika. Oh, my turn. It's like uh, a smoke on the water. Smoke on the water. And Isla in your glass. Gross. Hmm. Yeah, no, the, the land cask is not going to be my jam. Oh, the land cask. Coming back to the land cask, Going back there's to more jammy, like, 
Okay, yes, there is peat, there is smoke, there is iodine, there is uh, eraser tops. Are you getting sweetness from this? But I get like a jammy peach. Uh, no. Yes, like it's like a grilled peach. Have you ever had grilled peach and maybe put some ricotta on it oh and like gosh. some white pepper? Oh. Grilled peach with ricotta? Oh, <laughs> someone was a chef. <laughs> I put grilled pineapples with cinnamon and sugar on them and I'm delicious. Oh, going, going in between, so... Right off the bat, these being beginner whiskeys, these are not beginner noses. You can pull out so many. The flavors so are distinct. that is interesting because it competing with the Glenlivet chapters. <laughs> I love this. very one noted. I had Glenlivet. really low, yeah, normal Glenlivet, Najura especially. I, I had completely different expectations because of it saying that these are supposed to compete with Glenlivet chapters. But that is a fantastic point. Oh, for I... 27 bucks, if you compare these to any other whiskeys out there for $27, these are going to win. This like, is a phenomenal, even even a learning experience. Going between the two, you, you can draw it's funny, more flavors. It, you could pick up both of these for literally the price of like Jack Daniel Single Barrel, which I always recommend, but you're only going to get one note in one bottle. Right. Here, you'd be, you'd be getting two bottles and like... Way different notes. White complexity grape. Complexity all over the white place. White peach. And then back to... Yeah, now let's stay over here with the white peach and a little bit of salinity. This beef is, jerky. This is a dream. Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire <laughs> Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> He's having a stroke. The brown sauce that you put on steak. You know what? Uh, I'll go Lancaster a second. I'm digging into the sea cast. It smells amazing. I'm going to go into the Lancaster. Mm. 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 This is where you're getting the value. Mm. Mm. No, I mean, this is where you get, This is like, where the cost comes in. Yeah, it's, it's, it's thin. thin. It's super thin. This I is, mean, it is 40%, but it's thin. The peat on the nose is so much stronger than on the palate, which is a good thing, because I think he might it's actually enjoy the same thing. Like, the fruit on the nose is rich, and the salinity is rich, and then you get into it, and it's almost like you're expecting, like, fresh Himalayan salt, and you're getting, like, some table salt sprinkled yeah. in there. Yeah, not even salt bait. It's, a, it's, it's just not like, even it's bouncing just, off. It's throwing just it like, at you. Just yeah. Throwing Mm. <laughs> Ooh, that stings. And then the fruit was like really prevalent. You're still getting a little bit of, I'd say, white peach, but you're, it's, the rest of the fruit is very subdued. And even on the finish, it's not like, you're not getting a finish that's going to last and linger. You're getting a finish that's like, well, that was fun, wasn't it? That's so sad because I gotta like, go. I'm getting so much <laughs> caramel and toffee and it smell. it's, it's so rich. Oh man. Let me get water. In between this. I don't even want to add water to this because it's so... It's like a really weak Lagavulin. Oh, really? Yeah. I like the Lager. Do the Lager. If you guys are on Instagram, anytime you post Lagavulin, hashtag do the Lager. That's not my thing. I just like those people. Mm. I think you are going to like it. It is very... It's like nice. It's, it's, it's like you put cologne on in the morning. Just a dab will do you. You can put this on. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Tobacco immediately. Mm-hmm. Man, it's weak. Mm-hmm. That's why I was just like, the nose is really strong, really prevalent got, with peat. But on the on the palate, it's like uh, it's like even in the nose, there's complexity in the peat. Mm -hmm. And on the palate, I just literally got one note, just tobacco. And I was like, really, this is all we're gonna do? Maybe a little bit of jam. And like some type of dark fruit I, jam. I lost like the jam. Tons of tobacco. Like it's just like, like I feel like I'm sitting outside smoking a cigar. Like that's what's going on here. Yeah. A week. The cigar. finish is a little. <laughs> yeah. A week cigars can't do this. Connecticut's. It is like a Connecticut. The the finish though is just. It's a little bit more lingering because it's peated, obviously, but it's not. Wow. Yeah. So a mm. hundred times out of a hundred, we do a review and put water in it. But I think this is one of those times, like, I think if we put water in this, there'd be nothing left. Like, which is weird, because I'm not one of those percentage snobs. A lot of people are like, I only drink it at least 46%. And like, good for you. Oh, 52 if you can taste it. I love when people are like, oh, this tastes like 50%. And then you read the bottle, and this is 40. Like, this is 23. <laughs> it's not <laughs> even a liqueur. It's, yeah. it's not, actually, this is it's water. It's cordial. This is actually water. This is just a high-proof beer. It's O'Doul's. And like, <laughs> it's just like, it went from 52 to zero. <laughs> That's that's the thing. It's like people think it's like the first time you have Brooklady and it's over fifty percent, and, and you're, you're like, like oh it tastes goodness. like forty. This is like water, it's so good. 
And that's, it's kind of nice when alcohol gets out of the way, not, it doesn't always enhance the flavor. So like to, people try to make these statements all the time, like it's gotta be at least 46, otherwise it's not gonna be good. Which is why people who drink like Stag Junior straight up are just like, you don't have a palate. Right, that's you not actually you. actually don't taste things. That's not you. We Do you have are tongue? trying to get into this. So yeah. nose wise, absolutely. These are fantastic. For the nose, fantastic. if you pay just for the nose, these are worth it. Um, palate falls a little short. I actually would, for this, I would say just go buy Old Pulteney. Uh, for this, I'd say if you're looking for an intro to Pete that's not insanely offensive and you're not looking for Island Park, which is what I usually recommend, um, this is a fantastic entry Yeah, just to get you acclimated to where that world goes. Um, because then after I'm still this, tasting the tobacco and just a little bit of campfire yeah. like without... Without any kind of offensive, like, gross notes. It lingers really nicely. But, it like, does. this would be a good intro to then go to a, a, a Lagavulin 8, a Absolutely. Lagavulin 12. Um, and then from there, you're getting that campfire, really roasty, fiery smoke. <laughs> Ironically, Lagavulin's also E158. I mean, and like... you never hear people talk about it. Exactly. Because when it comes down to it, you, you want, like... <laughs> the flavor. You want the flavor. Exactly. You want the flavor. But then um, that might be a stepping stone into Lefroig as well. If you do enjoy the iodine the small eraser kind of portion into this, it's really good. Whatever floats your boat. Open Everybody's your different. Mind. Quattro, is that you? I just watched that movie the other day too. So good. So, so good. I, I would recommend that you don't taste this first. I would recommend, yes, definitely go see Cash uh, first. I just tasted a whole bunch. This was... He he said that it was already uh, kind of weak, uh, but then after tasting this, it was kind of smoky and peaty and then weak. So all the fruit that could have possibly been there, um, I lost it. But this is nice for beginners, though, because as a beginner, when you stick your nose in the glass, sometimes you're like, I don't know what I'm getting. No, here but you these know are very, getting. very obvious. And that's super helpful to a beginner because nothing builds your confidence more than being able to go, that's obviously salt. Like... I can obviously smell the salinity. That's obviously peach. I can smell the white peach in it. Yeah. Like that's really, really nice to be able to do. And that's a confidence builder and a confidence booster for people. But um, I'd say for the price range, that's this isn't bad. This no. is this is right where they want to be. Yeah. And I think uh, doing a better job than the other brand that I already mentioned. I'm not gonna say again because yeah. it's not polite. Go out and get yourself some Airstone. Airstone, yeah, from William Crabbe. Delicious. It's delicious. It's delicious. It's nosing delicious mm. for sure. It's a nose Glenn party. Care and glass. It's a party in your nose. Party. Um. So yeah. So if you guys have tried these, or if you see them on your shelf, um, actually, if you guys go out and buy these, like, just tell us down down in the comments below. Just be like, hey, I bought one, and you were right. Or you can say, hey, I bought one, and you were way wrong. Yeah, if you have, with a, maybe with a beginner palate, you might be like, oh my gosh, the sea cask is absolutely mind-blowing. Yeah. How are you guys not getting these fruits and everything? Like, maybe, you know, I, I'm we're a little past beginner palates at this <laughs> point. That we, but right? we do still love to try stuff that's geared towards beginners like this. So, um, yeah, uh, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, speak in a Scottish accent. Type, leave a comment in a Scottish accent down below. Or leave a comment if you want us to read labels in a Scottish accent. They could be completely wrong, but we'll try it. <laughs> Everything's worth a try. Everything. William Grattinson's Airstone. McAllen. Rare craft. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much rolling there. there. There is a lot. Too much. Too, too a little too, too much. much. A little too much. A, li a wee, a wee too much. A wee. A pity wee too much. A wee tidbit too much. Pity. Pity. They just say pity. A, a pity? Yeah, a pity for wee. Wee? A wee pity. No, that's that's like a little little. You can have a little little. Take a little more. Take, Take a little, little little more. Ooh, I like that. <laughs> <laughs>